in the previous video, I spoke about how when you simplify exponential expressions like this one over here, and you have pluses and minuses, just like you do in this one, you first have to factorize. We said that all the normal types of factorizing, HCF, highest common factor, difference of two squares, dots, trinomials, all of those can be asked, but in the context of exponential expressions. We're going to focus on highest common factor in this video, but a quick recap from the previous video, an alternative way to write this is like this. If you want more explanation, uh, watch the very previous video in this playlist. And here are some alternative ways to write 3 to the power of 2x. But now we're going to jump into a proper example, a highest common factor example. So first of all, the question will say simplify. You must know you cannot cancel. You cannot cancel. You can't divide yet because I've got two terms at the top separated by minus, two terms at the bottom separated by minus. So we must factorize first. Let's take a look at what these steps say over here. Write all bases, if applicable, applicable in terms of prime numbers or prime bases. These are all in their prime bases, so step one is already done. Rewrite the roots as powers with rational exponents, if applicable. We don't have any roots, so we don't need to worry about step two. Step three, break up or rewrite powers to help see what the common factor is. Now, some students don't even really need to apply this step on paper. They can think about it in their head. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to apply this step on paper to show you what I mean. So what I mean is 3 to the power of x plus 1 can be written as 3 to the power of x multiplied by 3 to the power of 1. If you're not sure how that is possible or where I get that from, watch the very previous video in this playlist. And then this one, 3 to the power of x plus 2, can be rewritten as 3 to the power of x and 3 to the power of 2. So all I've done, I haven't changed anything. I've just basically broken these up. What you're doing is this. You're taking this exponent rule that you know from grade 8 to 9 already, but you're going in reverse. At the bottom, I have 3 to the power of x, then minus, and then 3 to the power of x minus 1. So it's 3 to the power of x and 3 to the power of minus 1. Now, as I said, some students do not need to do this on paper. They can see visually what the highest common factor should be in each case. But for some students, it actually helps to see it in this format rather. So that is step 3 done. Take out common factor. So let's look at the top of the fraction first, the numerator. How many terms do I have? 1, 2. What do they have in common? 3 to the power of x. That's my HCF that I take out. I open my left over bracket. If I divide this first term by 3 to the power of x, I'm left with 3 to the power of 1. Or you can ask yourself, what must I multiply 3 to the power of x by to get the first term? You come to the same conclusion. Then we're looking at the second term. If I divide the second term, the minus needs to drop down in there. If I divide the second term, 3 to the power of x multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. If I divide that by 3 to the power of x, what am I left over with? 3 to the power of 2. Okay, I hope you understand what I'm doing. Then at the bottom, we can factorize it as well because I've got how many terms at the bottom? One, two terms. So as soon as you have more than one term, you need to factorize. What can I take out at the bottom over here? Again, I can take out 3 to the power of x because both terms have 3 to the power of x in them. Left over brackets. If I divide this by 3 to the power of x, anything divided by itself is 1. If I divide this by 3 to the power of x, you're going to be left with. Now remember, the negative goes in there. If you divide this by 3 to the power of x, you're left with 3 to the power of negative 1. Please don't forget these, if there's two terms at the top of the fraction, there must be two terms in your left over brackets. If there's two terms at the bottom of the fraction, there must be two terms in your left over brackets. Now, what we may do, because I have one term on the top, remember, this is representative, that's one term, that's one term, because I have one term at the top and one term at the bottom, I may now cancel if I can. So those I can cancel, or 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of x is 1. Then if they say don't use a calculator, technically, you're supposed to say 3 minus 9 at the top, and at the bottom, it's 1 minus a third. Where does a third come from? Remember, this is 3 to the power of negative 1. 3 to the power of negative 1 can be rewritten as a third. Very important. And then taking it from there, 
you can actually put it in your calculator. I know if it says no calculator, you're actually supposed to use no calculator. There's a lot of sub steps, but ultimately you get negative nine. Let's take a look at the second example over here. So write all bases in terms of prime numbers. That's it, it's done. We don't have roots, so step two is technically done. Break up or rewrite the powers to help see what the common factor is. Again, if you can see this and you don't need to write it out, then that's fine. But some students, it helps to see that this, as I mentioned in the previous video, so if you want more explanation, go look at that video, is the same thing as this. Then plus three to the power of X divided by three to the power of X plus one. That's step three. So all I've done in this step is instead of writing it like that, I'm writing it like that. Now we can take out the common factor. So two terms at the top, that is why we cannot cancel yet. I know, and I should have said this at the beginning of the sum, a lot of students are itching to do this. Cancel those. You cannot do that because we have two terms at the top and two terms at the bottom. So as soon as you have more than one term in your numerator or denominator, you first have to factorize. First, factorize. It is so important to get in the habit of looking out for the plus minus, separating different terms, and then knowing you have to factorize first. Right, two terms at the top, as I said, what do they have in common? What can I take out? Three to the power of X, leftover bracket. If you take this term, the first term divided by your highest common factor, you're going to be left with 3 to the power of x. If you take your second term divided by the highest common factor, you're going to be left with 1. Now, something amazing happens in this sum. I hope you can see it. 3 to the power of x plus 1 divided by 3 to the power of x plus 1. Excellent. They cancel. Even though the one at the bottom is not in brackets, you're left with 3 to the power of x. In the next video, we will do two more practice examples. So I don't want to lose you. I'll see you in the very next video. We'll go over these two. I'll see you then.